This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. So exactly what did you think we were going to do at 4 o'clock on Wednesday? <laughs> Everyone knows what we do at 4 o'clock on Wednesday. <laughs> we do Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Wow! Yay! Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sharon Moriwaki. I'm Jay Fidel. And in between, uh, we have, uh, we have Clint, uh, Colton cool. Ching. And um, Adam. Blocking, Adam Carlson. Okay, Adam, Adam Carlson. Okay, and they're from Hawaiian Electric. So we, this is a special show. We're going to talk about what Hawaiian Electric is doing and thinking about in terms of workforce, because this is right workforce, workforce month. Right. That's what it's about. Right. Uh, so Colton, what is Hawaiian Electric doing that requires additional, you know, employees, additional people looking for a job going forward? Oh, by the way, Colton is the senior vice president of Hawaiian Electric in planning and technology. Yeah. This is, that wraps around so many things, yeah. You know, <laughs> you're the first person to actually get my title right. So <laughs> thank you so much for that. Even, even my boss doesn't get it. So, uh, so it, it's, it's not so much sort of the volume of, of, of employees or in the workforce. It's really the changing nature of, of the workforce as, as Hawaiian Electric and, and many other businesses and industries move towards the adoption of new technologies, and that that march, that 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 steady progressive march to bring in new systems, data, technology into uh, a business is really transforming not just the business itself, but to make that transformation happen, it really requires the workforce to go through, you know, a similar or in some cases an even more dramatic transformation as well. And so for Hawaiian Electric, as we modernize our electric system, as we find new solutions to cost-effectively integrate new forms of renewable energy onto our grids, get us further removed from fossil fuels, uh, it also requires us to bring in technologies and creates new opportunities for our workforce who, uh, who can then take advantage of technology uh, to have a very, very great career at Hawaiian Electric. So I'm so glad that Adam's <laughs> here with me uh, to talk about it from both the, the, the company side, but also from, from those employees who are directly involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the grid. That's, that's not me. That, that's, that's him. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Adam, just to just put you on, in the landscape mm -hmm. here, um, you are the control operator of the Waiau uh, power plant. It's one of the biggest power plants in the state. One of the control operators. Yeah. <laughs> there are uh, many. Is, is the biggest? How many? Uh, How many? many? Kahi is actually our okay, biggest. All right, Kahi. Okay, and um, and that you were also the um, mm, recording, sec secretary. The recording <laughs> secretary for the IBEW <clears throat> in general. For, for that power plant or for the state in general? That's for our local IBEW. IBEW, yeah, okay, so that's secretary. big too. This mm -hmm. is big. I hope you guys have appropriate respect for our guests. <laughs> we're honored to have them here. Okay, so we put yeah. this together, we'll find out a lot of stuff tonight. Mm -hmm. The first thing I want to, you know, Colton, I want to sort of expand to what you were saying. Is, you know, Sharon and I have talked about the transformation for at least five years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and when you talk about something like that, you know, well, people say, oh, it must have happened already. You know, they started talking about it in you know, five years ago. But the fact <laughs> is the transformation is, is a thing that it's not only... It's an evolving thing. Right. Yeah. It's still it happening an and it becomes even more challenging as we go forward. Yeah. And it's going to continue to be challenging, not only from now till 2040 or 2045, but even after that. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. So th the way uh, we think about technology and the transformation that it creates, this is not getting through a single door going from one side of, of, of a door to the other. And once you're transformed, you can relax and sort of just be comfortable <laughs> in that place, right? It's, it's really about how everything in society is changing such that once you get through that door, there's another door behind it and another door behind it. So we really have a sense of that the future will always be a future where things are changing, where things are improving, with, where even better technologies are coming in where we're going to learn and leverage from the things that we're able to change upon and improve upon and make even further changes going forward right so for all of us as employees of Hawaiian Electric um, and you know really through the entire utility industry um, there's a pretty big uh, burden and, and responsibility in all of us to find the best way to embrace these new technologies and 
use them in a way that creates the greatest value for the customers that we serve. Um, you know, everyone can think of all of these tech companies who were very good or are very good at using technologies to make their product or their business mm -hmm. better, have a more meaningful product to serve for our customers, and we think of ourselves in the same way as well. Right? We may be behind a bit from an Amazon or, or from a Google <laughs> in the use of technology, but just I think, just yeah, just a bit, <laughs> but, okay. but, but the possibilities I think for us are even greater because we're not just a technology or a service company, but as part of us doing our jobs and, and providing the service to our, our customers, there's a lot of physical assets, hardware, systems, mm -hmm. electric grid, the largest machine in the world, right? that needs to also benefit from new technologies as well. So I think our potential is amazing. I think it then creates a strong need for all of our employees, right? Whether they're management employees or engineers or all of our many trades and crafts represented by the union to, to change along the way and adapt to those new technologies so that we can actually use them for the benefit of our customers. Yeah, and you can't know what the next store is until you go through the first store. Right. Okay. And so it's a matter of identifying, being nimble, and finding you know finding what the next store is going to be after you cross through. Yeah. And so this requires a certain mindset, corporate mindset. Alan Rashima talked about that. Well, he always talks about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you know the company is is going through a transformation. Also, it's not right. just the technology or the community. It's all of us. We are all together on this. Yeah. And you're talking about a process that involves everybody, really. Right. You know. Right. So, so I'm interested because when you transform organizations, especially large bureaucracies, well, state government for one, for mm -hmm. example, um, and and HECO, um, that that you really have a number of employees who are used to oh doing it the way I know how to do it and mm -hmm. being able to shift to say, okay, mm -hmm. we've got to do this differently. How can you think of another solution? And I know you've had some pilots and, and some good ones. I think we've awarded you some yeah. some um, some awards in the past, but how do you shift an entire workforce to want change or to to, 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 to really look it. for, yeah, mm -hmm. to look yeah. for, oh, I want to go through the next door, so I got to get through this one and solve the next one. But how do you, um, how are, are some of your employees, maybe you can answer that, mm -hmm. and to, to be able to embrace that, what does it take in the employees? So when you're training the young folks coming in, they're already not only just knowing how to, you know, take selfies and stuff, <laughs> but you know, so like, what is it that mm -hmm. you can, you can tell them to do so that they're in that mindset already. So they might not know very much coming in, but mm -hmm. they have the attitude and the willingness to, to you know, go forward and, and find new ways. I mean, uh, have you experienced that? Or I mean, we, we talk about that? it constantly, the union leadership as far as the changing environment, and the company talks about it. And so that's a conversation that we have all the time. So everyone stays mm -hmm. in the same place, because progress is coming. You can stand in the way and get run over, or you can get on board and, mm -hmm. and change. And I think the yeah. the way that, you know, when I'll talk as a, as a steward, and I'll talk with as a recording secretary and all that with our membership is that, you know, not only is it changing, but you're growing as a person, individual. That skill set that you're getting now, maybe that's going to transition to something else that you went down the road. So maybe you're going to take it with you to the mainland. Or maybe you're, you know, whatever it is that having that education, having that next title, is a benefit to you too. Mm -hmm. Even though it's going to be a benefit to the company mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. growing with the company and partnering with the company is is our key mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. us together, you know, we're going to yeah. fail independently. Yeah. The company. You know, they, they have the perspective of where we're going, and we have the perspective of the manpower in, in merging those together to have success. Because a company without success, that our so there's, there's a lot no of company. training. There's, there's no there a lot of training going on. Then, a lot yeah. of, um, mm -hmm. what team training or individual training? What, what are the skill sets? If you were to say, okay, high school students or okay, college students, whatever field, th these are the kinds of things we're looking for when you come work for us so that you can just jump right in and we can start training you in you know, the substance, but you know you have some yeah. stuff mm -hmm. coming in. You know? let, let me go back to the, the question that you asked prior because I think I, it helps to answer the, sec the second question. Um, to really take an organization, a large organization like ours, you know, the, the key ingredients, the critical ones that really get things going, number one, I think, is leadership. Mm -hmm. Right, and we have that in, in Allen. And 
it's what Adam said around how the leadership of the company and the leadership of the union working together mm -hmm. uh, hand in hand with a common vision, which I think is the next critical ingredient, right? We need to be able to articulate to all of our employees and, and all of our partners and our customers where we're going, where we're headed, and why, right? And that's this transformation work that we're looking to do. And Adam talked about always talking about it, right? That constant communication and answering questions that folks have about it by the leadership team through the vision that we create um, I think is critical. Got to do that. Super, yeah. super yeah. critical. So right? Critical. Mm -hmm. And then you need to take that and then paint a role for every employee within, mm -hmm. within that vision. Right? So that they feel maybe less threatened mm -hmm. and therefore less concerned and more open-minded around how the change, as Adam speaks to, can actually benefit them, right? It, it makes their job more rewarding. It makes them a more valuable employee, whether it's to Hawaiian Electric, hopefully with Hawaiian Electric, mm -hmm. but potentially with, with others as well, and, and get everyone to understand how they can fit in with it, within it. And that puts us in the best position to, to, to bring everyone along. Um, we won't bring everyone along. I think it's, it's just human nature in the real world where not everyone will, will get there, but we want to try to bring as many employees and many of well, our that's folks. That's the Pono way to do it, especially yeah. in Hawaii. Yeah. You're yeah. describing a Hawaii kind of relationship, a Hawaii phenomenon. Uh, yeah. What I find interesting is you, you two guys are here together. Because, mm -hmm. you know, let me take a moment and just react to that. So here you have um, Adam, and he is the control operator. That sure sounds like management to me, <laughs> of a large power plant. One, one of many, but yes. And, and he's also uh, the recording secretary, which is a union job for mm -hmm. the IBEW. Mm -hmm. So it seems like merged up. There's something unusual <laughs> happening here. You're describing yeah. a very unusual phenomenon. So why is this different, you know, than the ordinary phenomenon when you put management and labor together this way? I, I think all successful companies have as a common ingredient a good relationship between management and labor. Not, not all successful companies necessarily <laughs> do, right, <laughs> from a sustainable standpoint, but in terms of mm. being financially healthy, having employees that love their job and enjoy the company that they work for and have friendships uh, with their coworkers, you know, it, it's really an important and, and a necessary ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, I think, then creates this a good platform for mm. Sharon's, your second question around, as we move forward, how do we bring new employees, right, new uh, high school graduates or college graduates uh, into the fold. Um, I think with the with younger, and I don't want to stereotype. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try not to, right? But with with the younger generation of 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 the workforce, by the nature of their childhood and the experiences that they had growing up, they're far more comfortable with technology than than mm -hmm. me when I was growing up. Right. Yeah, don't you hate that? Yeah, I hate it, right? <laughs> they it, have to it, teach you. It, 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 but, but it requires, for us, a recognition that there are generational differences just because of the environment. And I think we have, I think, a good opportunity mm -hmm. to take advantage of that sort of that natural comfort that new employees or, or new members to the workforce mm -hmm. have to really leverage that and apply it to the jobs at hand. I think the challenge for us is how do we slow them down, right? Keep mm -hmm. them from, from, from maybe perhaps going a little bit too much in, in one direction and keep them aligned with, with, with everyone else and keep, you know, make sure they don't leave old folks like me behind <laughs> as, as they're marching for. They gotta keep talking to them actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah the communication. Yeah. 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 And the other challenge for us, I think, is that when someone who loves technology, who say is an engineer or a scientist or someone in IT, right? Or, or someone who, who has, like we were talking about earlier, may have a, 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 an associate or a college degree in a specific technology field, but wants to be physically out mm -hmm. in the outdoors in their job, doesn't want to be stuck in an, in an office in a meeting mm -hmm. uh, all day long. That's quite a few people. Yeah, right, which is, which is my job, right? Um, you know, how, how do we get them to stop and think about a company like Hawaiian Letra as a great place to actually fulfill those those mm -hmm. interests, right, and be able to leverage that 
that knowledge and expertise they have. Yeah. It's not a company that you would otherwise first think about. So I think for us at Hawaii Electric and all of our employees, as part of our job is to really, as part of this transformation effort, to really talk about how there's all of these great, wonderful opportunities that are now before us that maybe weren't there um, five years ago or mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if I worked for Hawaiian Electric, I'd walk around with a certain level of gratification all day long. I'd be looking up. I'd be looking at the lights. <laughs> I'm saying, no matter what we do, no matter yeah. what happens mm -hmm. here, there's all these machinations and para paragrations and whatnot, you know, the lights are on. That's what counts. That must yeah. give you a certain... You, do you look up and look at the lights? <laughs> the not, not when I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> not when now, I'm driving. watch this. I am going to show you how high tech works. I'm going to merely whisper the word break. And we're going to have a break. Watch this. Break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world. So caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day, what do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Make it a better try a little more, more than ever before. Hello everyone. Ted Ralston here, a host of our Think Tech show, Where the Drone Leads, where we talk weekly at uh, Thursdays noon, by the way, on subjects related to the emer emerging technology and business of drones, as they might apply here in Hawaii. Uh, issues involving commerce and education, legislation, uh, technology, public safety, all the things that you might want to hear about. Uh, we talk about them with uh, local experts and people from across the country. So join us at uh, noon on every Thursday, and we'll have a new subject, and we'll have uh, new faces to talk about this most interesting subject area. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're I told you we'd come back. That's also magic. Right? Uh, Colton Ching, Senior Vice President of Planning and Technology for my electric company. Uh, and we have uh, Adam uh, Carl Carlson, who's the Control Operator at Wild Power Plant. He's also the Recording Secretary um, for the IBEW, and he's just kind of a crossover between labor and management right here at our table. <laughs> <laughs> an array of talent we have here. And so, uh, you know, this is really important that we talk to Hawaiian Electric about this um, because there's a lot of kids every day, uh, kids I use it generically, um, <laughs> leaving, you know. And yeah. There was a program on PBS called How to Keep Hawaii Hawaii. Last Thursday I was involved in that. One of the big questions is how are we going to keep them here? Because they're going, if you don't have noticed, they're, sure. going. they're going. So this they're energy, gone. Hawaiian Electric, very promising possibility. It's technology, it's security, it's a, it's a brotherly love company, excuse me, I said that, maybe a brother <laughs> and sisterly love yeah. company. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's Hawaii. It, it has the values of Hawaii, and like it or not, that's what we got. And um, this, is, this is our future because energy is central to the economy, you know, there's no issue about that. So getting into the weeds, what kind of job, what kind of career is possible now and in the future? What do you think? Um, let me give you a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the areas where uh, my team is, has a lot of focus now is around how do you integrate uh, effectively uh, many, many thousands of mm -hmm. rooftop solar systems. And in finding some solutions mm. there where we're actually kind of leading the nation in finding integrating solutions, a lot of our engineers now have to become knowledgeable and familiar with power electronic systems, things that our engineers in the past maybe never had the need to. So now we're getting into hard, pardon the pun, hardcore hardware and software prog uh, programming mm. of semiconductors. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, it's not something that you would, you know, normally think of, but that's a big part of what some of my team members are doing. Uh, another area I think is a good example, as you add these kinds of systems onto a grid, um, sensors, these smart, intelligent devices, battery systems, electric vehicles, right? Think of all of these devices, all of the things we're doing to modernize the grid and provide options for customers with these distributed systems. Each of these things are talking to each other and they're all generating mm -hmm. enormous amounts of, of data. 
So for our workforce in the future, you know, they're going to need to be very adept, very knowledgeable and comfortable around use of big data, being able to use mm -hmm. some of the advanced machine learning technologies mm -hmm. and techniques to sift through just mounds and mounds of data to gain intelligent uh, pieces of information to make even better decisions going forward. Again, not something that you typically think of an electric utility doing or needing, but it's something that's, I think, going to be a growing and growing part of our business. So that includes, you know, computer familiarity, yeah. coding even. Data scientists. Data scientists. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, big data is, is really everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we, we have a lot of shows with the university, and big data is everywhere in the university. You can't do things anymore and the without Internet big data. of Things and the Internet of Things. Yeah. Everything yeah. interconnected. Yeah. So the yeah. question yeah. I, you know, I put to you is, um, so clearly we're looking for best practices and in integrating you know the one side with the other bringing big data together making conclusions connections automating everything yeah. um, the question is do we go beyond that do you think in the next um, between now and 2045 and I'm just picking that year no reason particularly um, to actually design software to actually take computer science scientists or people trained in computer science here from UH, for example, mm -hmm. and actually building software to go further on this data. In other words, uh, indigenous software development for the benefit <coughs> of Hawaiian Electric. Yeah, that, that, that's a really great point. Uh, we've uh, met with actually several utilities, electric utilities elsewhere, who maybe a bit further along than us on that. Um, there's sort of two schools of thought. You know, one is you can go to uh, some of the large um, data companies, um, in, you know, they, you, you're probably familiar with their names because they do a lot of advertising and whatnot, who do a lot of work around big data and, and machine learning. Um, you know, one, one school of thought is you use their products, their services to provide a capability within your organization. The other is around, you know, sort of more incremental, sort of learning as you go, trying to build that capability more internal mm -hmm. to the organization so it becomes sort of embedded within the day-to-day -day decisions that you do rather than a separate activity for the organization. And you grow your own. Right, and you grow your own and like you learn as you go. Right. Everywhere, yeah. And we see um, both utilities as well as other uh, companies in the energy space um, approaching it from, from either of those two ways. Right? We're, we're leaning towards growing that capability internally, starting off small, you know, finding a really good uh, case to make use of data analytics so that we can learn and at the same time actually accomplish something that benefits our customers with that investment uh, rather than just, you know, sort of a, of a big bang, sort of hope a big investment has a big payoff five years from now, right? We want to kind of bring some of that learning and value early on. Yeah, and it's all about um, pr predictions. Pr what do they call it? Predictability, predictions, yeah. um, where you take the, the analysis that you get from the big data and then you, you predict what's going to happen. For example, you predict demand based on you know a, a data history of that moment in time in the week, in the month, in the year, yeah. and everything else you can get. And you can actually make a, a prediction machine to say, demand at 4.59 p.m. this afternoon is going to be X. Right. And lo and behold, it is X, or very close. Yeah. You know, this can help you become super efficient. And that's a very local issue, because you right. have to bring in all the local data to do that. Right, yeah. right. absolutely. And you know, it's. It's around things like forecasting and predicting what's going to happen in the future for things like electric load. That's a really good example. Uh, but you know, bring it back to maybe something closer to what Adam does in his job as a control operator. We're moving away from either preventative or scheduled maintenance of components, whether it's in our power plants or throughout our electric system, um, to, to one more based on predictive uh, techniques. So we'll, we'll do measurements and we'll take temperature readings or do uh, infrared thermography uh, scans and we'll use that data and analyze the data mm -hmm. to help us make more informed decisions of when we should be maintaining a piece mm -hmm. of equipment. Mm -hmm. We won't do it any more often than we need to, but we'll do it enough so that we don't end up having it just fail on us. Efficiency. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, when it comes to jobs, you Every one of those sensors now has to be installed. It has to be well developed, installed, maintained. Right. So you're talking about a workforce that then has to be able to mm. handle all of that too. So where you increase that gets you your efficiency, you're actually going to need manpower and staffing to do that. So how has, um, looking at it from the union perspective, how has the union um, worked with your employees so that they all are into this mode of 
I guess it's constant learning, it's changing, shifting, mm -hmm. uh, and, and who does it and who doesn't do it, but how do you incentivize or, you know, other than I'm going to be a better person by it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what kinds of things have you folks been doing from the union well, perspective? The partnership between the union and the company is, is uh, you know, is the most important, obviously. But then going forward, you know, when we had gone through, you know, Schofield Generating Station that is still in the testing phase right now, we had a whole new group of operators that were going to go up there. So now this is in HECO, we don't, or Hawaiian Electric, we don't have, you know, the, the diesel gen low type of generators up there. So we had to go through and look at the job description and all that. So but you hired new people. We didn't hire new people. We you had, just trained. We trained the new. Yeah. Oh, so we okay. train our. So here, you're. This is an example of saying here, look, look at the opportunities that are going to come up. Maybe it's windmills. Maybe it's solar farms. Maybe this. This is all that's going to come down. There are batteries. You know, who knows? But here's an example of what we've done. Is okay. We put it out there. You know, we in partnership is is why it's so key is is that here we have operators that they check off probably eight out of the ten things that you need up there. The last two, okay, one, well, how do we go through and train them so that our current staff, our current workforce, because we are we're highly trained, we great uh, employees that you know now they can fill that new role. Mm -hmm. And as things change away from you know our old steam turbine, I mean. I'm working on a unit that was built in 1947. So <laughs> when you talk about old units, but it's going to retire. So now it's going to transition to that new one. But showing people that these new opportunities are out there and, you know, it's changed. And so do, do employees say, I want to work on that one, and then they get trained on it? Or sort of, I mean, how does that work in terms of knowing what's coming up and how do you get the employees sort of to, you know, to shift from where I am now and I'm going to be trained. Do I get trained during that time and still have my job? Or how does that work? I mean, so for, well, you have to train and retrain people. Sure. This is, this is an ongoing process. Yeah. It never stops. It never stops. And so if you yeah. can train your existing staff, you know, your existing engineers, what have you, mm -hmm. and then retrain them and retrain them, you have a, you know, a core of very, a very well-trained people sure. who can handle, mm -hmm. who can be nimble enough to handle the new, technology but mm -hmm. but you know there's one emerging question here is that we have a lot of kids leaving the islands mm -hmm. um, and uh, inherent in what you say I think I hear the fact that as time goes by you're going to need more than your existing you know staff you're going to need to hire additional people you're going to be able I think you know in the end uh, to have the very sophisticated jobs for a lot of people who are trained in you know in energy engineering I suppose you'd say um, and you could be able to offer a large number of people um, meaningful careers, high-paying high careers, and the prospect of staying in Hawaii and living a good life and even buying a non-affordable house even, <laughs> <laughs> or a non-affordable car. If, if, there, if, if there is such a thing. We have such a thing. <laughs> but I mean, that yeah. is the goal of, I mean, our, the way that the union looks at it is that this, these are those middle-class jobs. So it's that, that those jobs that, you know, nobody's, Nobody's getting super rich off of, but they are able to stay, stay here, here, live here, take that vacation, have a new car once in a while. I mean, and those are those that core jobs that we don't want to see being contracted in or anything like that. And that's why I'm, you know, I get back to that partnership between the company and the union to make sure that our current workforce is always being considered going forward as things change. We are looking at, you know, staying the same, growing in different areas, but it's because it is so fluid these days. Yes, but my, I'd like to pose this to you, Colton. Yeah. So if, if, I, if I become more efficient, I as an organization become more efficient, if my software is much more leveraged now, mm -hmm. and it handles in-house and out-house and engagement you know, with other people's facilities and all this, and it, it sort of uh, does this kind of uh, um, uh, transmission of information back and forth, and uh, the whole thing becomes a, a connected grid, if you will, yeah. Um, do I need more people going forward? I mean, c can you say, as the senior vice president of planning, <laughs> can you say you that we are me? going to need yeah. X number of people or X number of waves of people at a certain point in the future, um, or, or is it unknown at this point? Yeah, I think, uh, I, th I think this is what you're s saying, Adams, but, but do tell me if, I, if, if it's not. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. But I think really what the, the, the reality of the future will be, uh, as, as Adam points out, there's going to be new jobs uh, with new skills to do things that the utility never had to do before, right? With some of these new technologies, all these communication systems, right? The data work. Um, 
So those, those will be areas of, of growth of employment in, in these parts of, of the business. But at, I think at the same time, there's this real recognition that there are going to be, the, with, with the introduction of technology, there are going to be things that today may be more manually uh, uh, oriented, will be more automated. And in those particular areas, there may be lesser of a need uh, for a certain amount As of volume. As it is in so many other industries. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's hard to say whether on a total net basis we're going to grow or we're going to shrink or whether we're going to stay the, the same. The jobs will get more expert. Yeah, it's going to... careers will get better. It's, it's going to require definitely a change and a different set of skill sets uh, for our employees. I, I think it'll be uh, more enjoyable. I think it'll be more uh, rewarding. Hopefully, it means less meetings, right? <laughs> uh, which I truly hate. Uh, but it, it's definitely one where it's going to change, and I and I and I truly hope. And I, you know, I think you guys know I have a ten-year-old son. I truly hope that we can get to that point where our kids today, or those that will be graduating from high school or college in a few years, have that choice to come back to Hawaii mm -hmm. and make that choice where they're not giving up an opportunity to have a great financial uh, a future and a great professional career, right? Well, regardless of what that job is. I want them to have the ability to make the choice to get all of that here in Hawaii, whether it's working for Hawaiian Electric or whether it's working for, for any Hawaii company. Sure. And there are all kinds of contractors you deal with, so it isn't necessarily yeah. the main company either. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me close, uh, or at least ask my last question, then Sharon can close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my last question is, uh, you know, there's camera one with the red light on it, mm -hmm. and that, that represents all our listeners now and in the future, okay? <laughs> so, uh, Adam, can you, can you tell them, the kids now who mm -hmm. are listening, uh, how they ought to see this, how they ought to if they're interested, how they ought to fashion their lives, what they should study and do, and you know, what kind of mindset they should have in terms of the possibility of working in energy in Hawaii in the years to come. I would say that you're looking at getting that knowledge base of in electrical, mechanical, uh, technical, you know, it doesn't have to be specific to just one, you know, one area but to try to have a broad range, especially if you're looking at coming into the, you know, the trades and crafts side of it with you know, operations, maintenance, that kind of a thing. Um, and the key is get in the company. I mean, that, that is probably the most thing. Even if it isn't exactly what you want to do, obviously you want to, through, you know, if, even an internship or something, getting into the, getting your foot in the company because once you're there, you know, the company will, you'll have the opportunity to move around. So it might not be the exact job that you're planning in the future, Could, you know, that, that wind turbine operator or whatever it might be, but getting in there and then working towards that. So I think a broad knowledge base is, is ideal. Colton, how much of what Adam said do you agree with? So I lived what Adam said, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, I joined Hawaiian Electric when I was 23 years old, right? And I joined, it, joined the team as an engineer, uh, as a, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I was very focused on the mechanical systems in our power plants. And you know Adam, what Adam says is right. You know, I one of the great things about working for Hawaiian Electric is that because we are a large organization that does a, such a diverse set of things, that as an engineer I had an opportunity to work in so many different places, different parts of the organization. Even if it really wasn't an engineer's job, mm -hmm. right? The company still uh, creates these opportunities, leveraging what you know from that job that you had prior, and apply it to the job mm -hmm. going forward. And and, and as an employee of Hawaiian Electric, um, you know, it's, it's so rewarding to be able to, to learn as I continue to further my career in this company, right? It's the, it's the greatest gift that the company has given to me, um, this ability to continuously learn a bunch of, whole bunch of different things. Um, Change the world. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, a side close, yeah, that's a side pretty benefit. Close. That's a side benefit. But it, it's, 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 you know, I think Adam's got it spot on that, that that nimbleness, that that desire to always learn something new, and the ch always the, having that continuous next different challenge, uh, I think is a is a great motivator. It's an, also a great reward mm. for mm. for employees. Yeah, and so I think great. that's a that's a that's a wonderful way to think about um, a career at, at Hawaiian Electric. Mm -hmm. 
Whoa. Sharon, time for you to wrap up now. <laughs> so you've got that, kids. That. Yeah, this is the place to work. Go to Hawaiian Electric. <laughs> There's more than you ever thought there existed. <laughs> but I, I really appreciate Colton and, and Adam coming because I think when we look at industry, when we look at keeping our kids here and, and not losing them uh, to the mainland, uh, what you said is spot on, Colton, is how do we keep them here if it's meaningful jobs, if they can make enough money to, mm -hmm. to get a house, to live here and, and grow their own kids. Mm -hmm. So I really would like you to come back when you're closer to the opening the next door, <laughs> or even before then, <laughs> even before then, to tell us, um, and, and again, telling, telling the, the kids of today that there is a future in Hawaii and how they can prepare themselves to get into the first door into yeah. Hawaiian Electric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always say that you know the, the future of the state in terms of developing diversification is technology. Well, what do you think energy is? <laughs> yeah. Technology. Yeah, it is technology. <laughs> thank you, Colton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. 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 Thank